Welcome to Practically Christian. I'm Janelle, and I'm here with my husband, Luke. Hi, guys. And our friend, Jake. Hey. We share conversations to help you know Jesus more deeply and follow him more faithfully. The truth is, no one has arrived at Christ-likeness. To grow in that direction, we believe you need authentic relationships and biblical theology applied to your everyday life. We hope you're encouraged to grow and live out the biblical truths we will discuss on this episode. So let's get practical and dive into a conversation about fears people have about hearing God's voice. So, um, really quick, I just want to point out that now that we have video, it makes sense when I wave. Um, and if you have listened to any episodes where we do not have video, um, I always laugh, and actually Luke and Janelle also always laugh, and sometimes we silenced it because I would wave my hand and wave every time I said hi or hey, um, and I would see myself like in a reflection, and I would like crack up, and Luke would crack <laughs> up at it. Um, so now it makes sense. Uh, look who's winning now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, um, what do you think uh, are reasons that people f- can fear trying to hear God? Like, what are fears that maybe would prevent people from trying to hear God? I mean, when you ask this question, the first thing I thought of is uh, the same reason why some people are kind of scared or hesitant to pray for God to work in their lives or to do miracles because in that situation, it can feel like if you pray for something and God doesn't answer, is that proof that he doesn't exist or mm-hmm. he's not really there? And so I think there can be like a subtle internal fear of what if I ask God to speak and he doesn't? Like, does that mean he's not there? And I, mm-hmm. almost like a, a fragile faith of mm-hmm. I'm worried about my faith and if it can take this blow or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, definitely. I think another reason could be that um, when God does speak, if you are a believer, you know, he has authority and he might say something you don't want to hear or give you directions that you don't want to follow. Um, so in a sense, hearing God's voice involves submission to the voice of God. And I think that can be scary for people. Mm -hmm. Definitely. Any other ways you think or reasons people could be afraid of trying to hear God's voice? Uh, I just would affirm what Janelle said of, like, if he speaks, it's like, oh, no, like, I have to do this thing now, mm-hmm. or know that I'm disobeying God. Yeah. I think some people struggle with hearing and then wondering if it is God. Mm-hmm. So I think that's another thing. Like, they don't want to obey a false voice, yeah. you know? So they. I Why think did that's... you point at me when you said false <laughs> voice? <laughs> <laughs> Like no Luke's particular. voice, for example. <laughs> no particular reason. <laughs> yeah, I think that's true. Like, they get, like, and sometimes the fear of, am I just making this up in my head? Yeah. Um, yeah, definitely. I think some of the other ones could be, um, one of the fears is like, is it God's voice or is it Satan's voice? Like, mm-hmm. if I believe in the spiritual realm, like, how do I know that it's not Satan or like another spirit telling me the wrong thing? Um, and then, uh, I think this is the biggest one for me is what if I'm confident that God has told me something and then it still doesn't come true? Um, like, what does that mean for the whole thing? Like, does that mean I was wrong, but I was very confident that God said it and God reaffirmed it? Well, does that, like, what does that mean? And I think that's kind of a, a struggle there. Mm-hmm. So out of all of, like, the ones we've talked about, or if you can, if you come up with a different one that's um, for you, which one is the biggest fear for you when it comes to trying to listen to God? Yeah, I'd say probably hearing something I don't want to hear, or, un- like, that can be a no to a prayer request that I think is really important, and that I'm right on wanting it (laughs) or whatever, or it can be, um, yeah, if I was given directions that are really hard or unpleasant, then. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's probably mine too, is the, uh, God says no to something, or I think more for me, it's like the, what if he calls me to do something I really don't want to do? It's Mm -hmm. like, I can. Mm -hmm. What about you, Jake? Yeah, I said my, mine is definitely, I think, when it's like, if I'm very sure 
that I've heard God's voice. What does it mean if that fails? What if that thing doesn't happen? Um, because it is like that, that spot of, if you're very confident that you hear, have heard God's voice and you feel like you've heard, you know, you feel like that's been confirmed. Um, in some sense, and I think it's like the opposite way of the faith shaking of, um, if you're confident over a long period of time and God doesn't correct you, then does God exist? Hmm. Does that make sense? Where it's like, yeah. it's like, if let you continue in this. Yeah. If you're, of... if you're honestly trying to hear God and you have heard incorrectly for, let's say nine months or a year and you're waiting on this thing and then it, it doesn't happen or it hap- it's very mm-hmm. obvious that it like is not what you thought you heard. Mm-hmm. Like it's a question of does God exist or does God just not love me enough to yeah. correct when I'm... Yeah, I don't um, know if this fits what you're describing, yeah. but when it comes to like faith, I often think of like a rock climbing analogy of like in rock climbing, you, you learn how the system works and you set it up right and then you entrust yourself to yeah. that system. Like you actually climb the wall yeah. and if you fall you're trusting in that system. What I hear you saying is like, I'm trusting in the system. I'm on the wall. Yeah. And then what does it mean if I fall and I I fall all the way to the ground and the rope doesn't catch me? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Exactly. It's like that. If you do put the trust in, you are, you are setting yourself up for either success or failure. No in between Mm -hmm. kind of, kind of situation. Yeah. Um, that's probably the biggest one for me. So, um, yeah, on the idea of um, one of the things, like, one of the fears is hearing a voice that's not God's voice. Like, either your own head voice, um, which, apparently, I'm going to be honest, I learned recently that some people don't hear a voice in their head, um, like, at all, which I think is so weird. Um, and I actually have two, two of the people in my young adults group don't hear God's voice in their head, or, like, don't hear any voice in their head at all. Like, when they read, they don't hear a voice in their head, and I was like, oh, my God, I don't know what to do with that. Um, but, um, <laughs> but if you... Um, well, I mean, it goes back yeah. to what we were talking about, oh, like, yeah. in previous episodes. Like, God speaks in oh, different yeah. ways to different oh, no. people. A hundred percent. No, I mean, like, I don't know what to do with that. Like, I don't know how I, w- I would exist if that wasn't the case for <laughs> like, me. Like, how does your brain function yeah. without a voice? Well, and what's funny is they were both like, yeah, I hate reading fiction. Hmm. Because I just, they literally, one of them said, it's like watching a silent movie. I was like, wow, that does sound really boring, <laughs> like, comparatively. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> um, so, um, uh, but when, if you do, like, hear a voice, or even get, like, uh, I think this could also be true in, like, the idea of, like, if you get an image, or if you get a communication of or some sort. Or a nudge, or direct, yeah, sense of direction. Yes. How do you distinguish between God's direction, your own be- brain just kind of doing things, and Satan or, uh, like, evil spiritual voice? Or di- mm-hmm. direction? How do you personally, dis- like, decide... Yeah or understand for yourself the difference. Yeah, I mean, I think I have some advantages of having been raised in a Christian home, and, like, whether I chose to or not, I had lots of Christian formation. Um, mm-hmm. So I think I I personally wouldn't have as much of a struggle with, like, the satanic, mm-hmm. um, confusing the satanic voice, because I have such a formation around who God is, like, the mm-hmm. kinds of things God wants, Um yeah, it like I've I've had satanic influences in the past, but it all has to do with things that I know are wrong. Mm-hmm. So it's like, like you weren't confused about whether. Yeah, it wasn't wrong. like is God telling me to do this thing? <laughs> it was like like ideas in my mind when I was mm-hmm. in a bad place of things I should do or mm-hmm. um, sins I should commit. So um, I've never had that confusion though mm-hmm. of like is this Satan or God? Mm-hmm. You know, um, but then I think. Yeah, I definitely would say discernment again, like yeah. back to our our last conversation on the previous episode. I think there's discernment. I think God will confirm for you um, if you ask for confirmation, and that can be through other people, other Christians, um, circumstances, um, just a mm-hmm. confirmation in your spirit, a peace about something that you wouldn't normally have peace about. Mm-hmm. Um yeah, my answer is similar in some ways, and it's probably not very helpful if you're currently struggling with that question. But from my own life experience, 
I've struggled with that question less and less Mm -hmm. the longer I've followed Jesus and uh, the more I've read scripture. So to set this up, I've heard the analogy before that um, bank tellers have to be trained Mm -hmm. to recognize counterfeits. Right, you mm-hmm. need to know like this is not a real hundred dollar bill. Like, don't put this mm. in the safe. Uh, yeah, exactly. Um, but the the training they do, they don't study all the ways that counterfeits work. They don't study all the wrong bills. They just study really well all the markers of a genuine bill, mm-hmm. and then you kind of develop this instinct when you pick up a counterfeit bill of like maybe I don't even know what's wrong, but I know it's not genuine, mm-hmm. and I have that sense. And for me, that's sort of what it's been like um, just having years and years of being in Scripture and following Jesus, Mm -hmm. where in the last episode we were talking about, like, hearing God's voice through Scripture, and I think that is a part of why Scripture is important, because God speaks through it. But I think there's an additional reason why Christians should be in Scripture regularly, and that is like this, I don't know, like almost simmering in Scripture develops this ability to recognize counterfeit mm-hmm. more easily. It's like, no, I know God's truth and I know that's not it. Mm-hmm. And I can recognize that more easily. And so I think there really is a high value in that. And so um, this is a really good, long, complicated way of saying, does it match with scripture? Mm-hmm. <laughs> that's one way to tell. Or, or does it match with what you know of God? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think one of the things that, I think you guys both answered how you can tell the difference between God's voice and Satan's voice, but what you didn't address as much was how do you tell the difference between your own thoughts Mm. and God's voice, especially when it's something that you want. How do you tell the difference between what God is telling you Mm -hmm. if it's something that aligns with what you know of God and... um, is something that you desire. Right. It's not a wrong thing. It's, it's not, not what, sin. No, it's not a wrong thing, but yeah. it's also not like, because I think one of the easy like cheat roads is like, you know what, if you feel like a sense of peace and you hear a voice in your head telling you to do something you obviously don't want to do, it's like, that's a good chance that that's God's voice. Mm-hmm. But if it's something you do want, yeah. and you feel a sense of peace, like how do you tell the difference between a good thing that you mm-hmm. want, like just a good thing that you're mm-hmm. thinking about and a good thing that God is telling you about? Yeah. So I actually experienced this uh, our senior year of college. Janelle and I were dating. Uh, we've been dating for a couple of years, and we wanted to get married. And I wanted to get married to Janelle, but I didn't. I didn't have like a sense when I prayed about it. I just mm-hmm. I didn't hear anything. Mm-hmm. And I actually uh, went to our campus pastor chaplain. What was it called? Anyway, and um, was talking this, and he's like, "Pray like." he encouraged me like just pray and tell God like this is what I want to do and here are the reasons why and if you don't want me to do that tell me no okay so it was like almost like Like there's freedom God doesn't always have to give you a resounding Mm -hmm. yes for you to move forward on something yeah so yeah. what I hear you saying is like, look for those open doors. <laughs> no, 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 actually, no. I'm saying, I'm saying, pray for a no. Like, yeah. this is what I'm planning, God, and I don't hear you saying yes or no. Like, I don't, yeah. I don't sense your direction, and I'm going to move forward, but I'm open. Yeah. Like, tell me no. Like, yeah. I want well. to listen to you. I want to listen to you. Yeah. But it's almost like uh, the old another analogy I've heard. I don't know why I'm thinking of all these analogies. It's like. <laughs> Uh, if you ever do a driving test, at least when I did my driving test, it's like if the instructor doesn't say anything, it means keep going straight. Mm-hmm. Where it's like... Like, you shouldn't be like, was I supposed to turn? Am yeah. I supposed to turn now? Like, you're, yeah. you're expecting to go forward yeah. until they yeah. tell you to turn. Interesting. I hadn't heard that one before. I have a bad experience with driving instructors. <laughs> I failed my driving test three times. None of them my fault. Sure. And you think, and you, and now you think, that was definitely, like, the, everyone says that. I got ran into in the parking lot before my test started, and because I didn't honk, he failed me. Like Someone else hit you. <laughs> someone else hit me. My car was not in motion. Wow. <laughs> that would be unfair. Yeah. But there were two other times, Jake. Uh, yes, two other times. The first time was because I had zero infractions. And then um, on the road, um, going um, to the DMV, it's 50 miles an hour, 
and you're supposed to do a right turn, and I did not look over my shoulder because it was a bike lane that I just been going past at 50 miles an hour. I did not actively check for a bike when I turned into the DMV, and I failed. Automatically, doesn't matter how many, just that one. And then the third time, uh, in the words of my mother afterwards, wow, that lady really feels like she hates men. Um, because she yelled at me the entire time, including telling me to speed up at a five-way stoplight in a school zone before I had seen the speed limit. <laughs> wow. And she was like, you need to go faster. If you're going more than three miles under the speed limit, you're going to fail. And I was like, okay. So I'm just saying, <laughs> driver's tests. Um, yeah, sorry, I know that was a big tangent. but no, that's, right. that's fun. <laughs> fun to hear your stories. Yeah, so what about you, Janelle? How do you tell the difference between... Um, or is there a, have you ever had the need to, for, to tell the difference between your own thoughts and God's voice? I haven't had a significant experience with that. I feel, um, I feel like I can usually tell what I want and it's separated from what I hear from God. I don't know. Mm -hmm. For me, it hasn't been a struggle to Mm -hmm. differentiate those as much. Um, I feel like there is a lot of freedom in the Lord, like, if you are wanting something kind of similar to what Luke was saying about um, his story about marriage and deciding on whether or not to marry me, is like he wanted it. It was aligned with everything he understood about God's desire for marriage and for people and for... Yeah, and side note, we did do a lot of those other things, too, that we've talked about before, Mm -hmm. like where we asked wise people mm-hmm. like we want to get married what do you think mm-hmm. wise kind of counseling type people Sorry, yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah like there's a bigger part of the discernment than just not getting a no yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah but in general i feel like there's freedom in the lord like he's not like i have this one you know path for you and if you get off it in any way then mm-hmm. it's ruined so in a lot of ways i think if you're just consistently prayerful and moving forward on things that you know to be neutral or good then mm-hmm. you have a lot of freedom in it Mm-hmm. Yeah. For for me, I have had some pretty, like, I don't know, like, upfront experiences about where, like, I felt like Satan was talking to me, and God was talking to me, and I couldn't decide which voice was which. Um, and there was this, like, I was driving one night, and I very much heard, like, this is not going to happen, this is not going to happen, this is not going to happen, this is going to happen, about the exact same thing this is not going to happen, this is going to happen, this is not going to happen, this, well, probably about back and forth, like, eight times. Um, and I was like, God, could you just tell me which one of these is right? And immediately, all of the, this isn't going to happen, stopped, and I heard one more time, this is going to happen, and then nothing else. And I was like, oh. So I think, uh, I'm beyond, like, I think my, the biggest cheat code in some ways, at least for me, has been, ask God if you're mishearing <laughs> God. And, like, <laughs> and just, like, you know, in, in a sense yeah. of, like, I, 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 my favorite analogy for God is, like, God is the Father. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, if your kid doesn't hear you or doesn't understand what you want and asks you for clarification so that they can do what you want, that a good parent isn't going to get mad at them. They're going to be like, oh, like, yeah, sure, here, yeah, let, let, me, me, explain. let me explain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do feel like there's almost like a spiritualism element where, and I don't know what religious system it comes from, but we're like, there are these mysteries and like cryptic mm-hmm. messages that you have to decode correctly mm-hmm. in order to um, be in the will of God or whatever. And it's like, that's very much not, I mean, I think there are mysteries and there are things that have been revealed, especially when it came to Jesus, right? Where there were mysteries in the Old Testament that kind of click together when you see, like, oh, mm-hmm. this is what the Messiah looks like. And um, But then I think in our lives, God is not this cryptic, like, trying to confuse people. Like, I think he, he says, seek and you will find. Like, if you're seeking truth and seeking mm-hmm. the Lord, he will reveal himself. Mm-hmm. That's like... A promise, yeah, um, and I think that's true in prayer as well, as far as hearing the Lord, like mm-hmm. if you are seeking and really seeking him, he will he'll tell you this is what I said, <laughs> he won't just be like, "I hope you figure out what I said, mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. yeah, it's not it's not a game, yeah, in some sense, yeah, I think in the other the other one that was very funny for me was um a uh, old friend from high school was getting married, and his mom made sure that I got invited to the wedding because she wanted to set me up with someone at the wedding. 
she told me that. She told me she was she was like, hey, there's this person I want you to meet. And so the wedding is approaching. And I'm, like, walking and praying about it. And in my head, I'm like, it's not a thing. And then I'm like, is that just me or is that God? And actually, it, at, at this point, I'm, I'm kind of convinced it was just me. But then I prayed about it, and I very clearly heard this exact sentence. <sighs> Jake. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you for asking. The answer is no. <laughs> and, like you heard a sigh. I heard like a sigh. <laughs> and my name. And like this like very clear like. It was like, it was kind of like this. It was like very much like, thanks for asking. Like, I appreciate you coming to me, but you were like, you were correct in what you were thinking. This is not a thing. <laughs> um, and in that moment, I kind of like felt like, wow, that, that did feel a lot different mm -hmm. than my own head voice. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, I would say I think that your your head voice often can come, and not always, but with like a sense of trying to control or anxiety. Um, and I think that's when when you when you can't tell between your own head voice and God's voice. I think the the question to ask is like, am I trying to control this? Is this like because manipulating I'm manipulating a yes, yes when you am I yes. trying to manipulate this? Am like that kind of thing? I don't think that's always the case. I think asking God just to be clear with you about it is a helpful thing. Um, but I really do appreciate, um, for the distinction between Satan's voice and God's voice and actually just uh, hearing God's voice in John 10, um, 14, it says, I am the good shepherd. I know my own and my own know me. Um, and I think there's very much, uh, and then it goes on. I have, um, uh, I have other sheep that are not of this fold. This is verse 16. I must bring them also and they will listen to my voice. Um, so there will be one flock, one shepherd. And I think there is like this very big idea. The more that you know Christ, the more that you'll know his voice, you'll know God's voice. And I think that for me, that has looked like, actually me and Luke were talking about AI digital stuff the other day um, and like getting it to generate pictures. And one of the things he was talking about was how if you put in specific things, it'll make the background blurry and the upfront focus. Yeah, if you talk about camera and lens yeah. type and setting. Yeah. Um, and I think that a lot of times hearing, understanding if it's God's voice or not is actually about the background, not about the picture. Hmm. Because you could very easily hear so, like a voice telling you about a sin that you've committed and that you, and hear it in the exact same way or the same words. But if the background is condemning, give up, you can't do this, versus peace, love, I'll help you, that like in the background of those same words. Mm -hmm. The very accuser simply, versus the... Yeah, exactly. The yeah. accuser versus the comforter. So you're saying like the foreground is like, you have sinned yeah. in this way, but yeah, the background, yeah, that's really interesting. Um, and that, that, that really hit me once when I was, I was having trouble like distinguishing and I was like, God, like, let me know like what's going on. And then I heard the same two sentences again, but one of them said, it was like, said the sentence and it said, I love you. And the next one said the sentence and then said, I don't love you. And I was like, oh, I know which one I should probably go with at this point. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah. Um, well, and two, like this, the, all of this brings up something we talked about in, um, I think both of the previous episodes on hearing God's voice and we should like, if you haven't listened to those, you should definitely listen to those yeah. that provides the foundation, but that it's not simply about like getting the directions right from God. Like this mm -hmm. is a relationship that he wants to have. And so just like Janelle and I would be extremely unhealthy if I only asked her ever for directions mm -hmm. and that was it like communication is not just for directions it's also for connection mm -hmm. and so um and the other thing i was thinking about and tell me what you think about this jake and janelle is that sometimes like we're looking to hear god's voice or for confirmation because we're scared of doing something wrong or mm -hmm. outside his will and yet there is also so god always wants to connect with us i think and always wants to speak to us 
But then at the same time, he also wants us to grow in maturity and Christ like this mm-hmm. and to become the pe- mm-hmm. kind of people who more and more often just like, yeah, just like with kids where when they're really little, you're like, pick up that toy and put it in this box. Now pick up that toy and put it over here. Yeah. Whereas later when they're older, you're like, clean up the room, go kids, you know, yeah. um, and you kind of are expected to graduate from minute instructions a little bit. Okay. Yeah, that's and even in a sense that at that point and then at one point you're supposed to be able to clean the room without instructions. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Yeah, like you you it's like you only I think with like if you had like a seventeen year old kid, you would never tell them to clean their room until they hadn't cleaned their room. You know, and it had been like not Yeah. Or like the fact that they don't have clean clothes because they're all piled on the floor will be their own obstacle to putting stuff in the laundry or whatever. Yeah. But I I actually thought of that or reminded me of it of your story Mm -hmm. that you just shared about like asking God about this thing and his response was like like I appreciate you asking, but like you already know. Yeah. Like you know the answer here. You know the answer and that I don't know. Yeah, where we can seek God's will, but not always like demand an answer for every question. Yeah, or trust our trust our formation. And yeah, just the formation that He's and, and in some ways trust the other things that God has said. Yeah, um, yeah. I have had experiences where, like, there was this one ridiculous time where I felt there was this task I needed to do, and I felt a strong, strong resistance to doing it. Mm-hmm. And I kind of talked myself out of it. I was like, "No, you just need to." Mm-hmm. push through this like I I laziness and Luke was like wouldn't this be good to do and I for some reason I had like this strong like I don't want to do this right now and yeah. I'm not like that I'm very pliable in my personality I want to say and then I was like no I'm going to do it and I went and did it and it was like this horrible experience of like it would have been fine another time but it wasn't okay yeah. right then and um, I was like why was I so resistant to my own intuition mm-hmm. because I, I felt unwise that I didn't listen to mm-hmm. my own intuition. And I think that kind of lines up with what you're saying is like, if you have a strong intuition about something, you don't need like mm-hmm. always to get it. A hundred percent. Yeah. Like a word from the Lord. Should I do this task or not? God? Like, I think in some ways I, I need to be better about listening to my own body. Like God gave us, mm-hmm. he gave us all these structures of our spirit and our body to yeah. also communicate, you know, like, I don't know. Like we don't need, <laughs> we don't need instructions from the Lord if He's giving them through another means. Mm-hmm. Well, it was like a back when I was um, just getting out of college and I was applying for youth ministry positions at that point, and I, I still remember I was I was interviewing at this place and they were a little weird in some ways, but like not like terribly weird, um, and they offered me the job, and I was like I was like I'll get back to you you know I'm gonna pray about it and I had this terrible feeling about it and I actually I was living with Janelle's parents at the time and Ed her dad was like if you have a terrible feeling about it you shouldn't do it don't do it and Janet who I love very (laughs) dearly um response was it's a terrible job market you should just take the job and be happy that you have it (laughs) She probably said it a lot nicer than that, but, um, <laughs> um, and I ended up turning it down and I found out later that week that the church's last three youth pastors had all like molested children in the youth group. And I was and like, they hadn't told and they hadn't told me at all during the interview process. And I was like, I'm really glad that I said no to like this position. Cause that's obviously really unhealthy and not yeah a good the spot. fact that the leadership wouldn't yeah. share like to be clear you're not saying it would not be okay to be a youth pastor where uh, children have I think, been molested <laughs> I think no no I think it was it was partly the leadership and it was partly that it would have been my first ministry job and I was unprepared yeah to, for, to step into that situation mm-hmm. where there's a that, lot of where there's a lot of past hurt that I wasn't prepared to deal with yeah. at that point kind mm-hmm. of thing yeah yeah well, and God was telling you no yep. through that horrible feeling. Through that feeling. Like, horrible feeling. It was just like, yeah. don't do it. Yeah. 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 Through Ed's voice, but not Janet's. Through Ed's <laughs> voice, but not Janet's. <laughs> I mean, I do think that's true. Like, I think we, when we say it's important to get the counsel of wise people, like, I think you get conflicting voices from people. Yeah. And how do you discern... And so in that case, like, you're feeling lined up with one person's counsel, and that isn't yeah. what, what you ended up going with. But I do think it can be hard to navigate. Like, I think sometimes we're making it sound like it's so clear if you just pray about it. Like, I think sometimes things can be mm-hmm. difficult. Or 
the answers can take longer to come than we would prefer Mm -hmm. in our microwave culture. Mm -hmm. So um, have you ever experienced mishearing God or attributing um, God's voice to something that wasn't in your life? Have you ever felt like you had direction and then it ended up not being direction? Or has that not been a thing? This is fuzzy for me because I I don't know if at the time I felt like God had spoken to me or if this just was my plans. Mm -hmm. But when I was like a junior and senior in high school, I had kind of like these, I want to say like adventurous ideas about what following Jesus Mm -hmm. means. And I was kind of anti establishment. Anti establishment. And what I saw was like the boring thing that everyone did. And so in my mind, I was like, I was kind of going back to like the what would Jesus do question on over and over again. Mm-hmm. And um, this is all brought up because I was making my college choices and trying to decide on where to go. And I was like, what would Jesus do with college? And at the time, I was like, he wouldn't go to a Christian college. Like, he would go to a secular college where no one knows Jesus, and he would get them all to become Christians. <laughs> and so, like, that was my plan. And I was very confident that that's what God wanted me to do. Um, and I ended up not being what God wanted me. I ended up going to Christian college, and I know that that's where I was supposed to be. Yeah. Um, but you were convinced for a while. That, like, but I was, was very convinced. I mean, even through applications, like applying for colleges, I remember... I applied. I applied for Harvard, and I didn't get in. <laughs> surprise. <laughs> surprise, surprise. Um, but I was, like, so confident. I wasn't even going to apply for other colleges. And my mom was like, no, you have to. <laughs> you, you have to apply. Well, for a while, you were like, maybe I won't even go to college. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll just go do mission work. Yeah. or. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, even after I got accepted at this college, and God kind of confirmed to, to go to Westmont, a Christian college, but... Even after that, I still, like, didn't really want to or wasn't sure about it. Yeah. Okay, this is a random question, but um, you said, you asked the question, what would Jesus do? What was that other bracelet that you had that was, like... Oh, the, LLJD. Live like Jesus would. Live like Jesus did. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. live like Jesus did. I just remember that Luke was, like, mm-hmm. I was, like, the intense version of what would Jesus do. <laughs> People were like, what is that? Yeah, I was hardcore. <laughs> um, yeah, what about you, Janelle? What did, uh... Yeah, I feel I feel like I've not had a lot of circumstances where I'm totally up in the air and like unclear. Like I I think I've had a smoother ride than it sounds like both of you guys have had. So <laughs> I won't contribute to this portion okay, of the conversation. How about you, Jake? Yeah. Well, I was gonna did, did um did did it negatively affect you how you thought that if you could hear God or like so or positively affect like that like yes and no like I remember it being a very stressful time for me my whole senior year I was like I didn't know what I was supposed to do and I was very stressed about it and I was very devastated when I got rejected mm-hmm. at Hartford <laughs> <laughs> you just start cracking up. Uh, yeah. um, well, you were like on the wait list for a while, right? And yeah, really I applied out. early, and then I was on the wait list till the normal. So it was like a long waiting game. It's like I'll get in, I'll get in, and then I didn't. Um, but what happened was, uh, so yeah, it was like still God working through interesting circumstances where. I applied to one Christian college I was sure I would go to, as East Pacific, because my older sister had gone there. And then I applied to Westmont just as, like, a last-ditch having another option. Mm-hmm. And then when we went and visited the two colleges, after I found out I didn't get into Harvard, then I was like, okay, which of these Christian, Christian colleges that I got into should I go to, if, if either? And I visited Azusa Pacific, and, like, visiting for me was, like, brought it all to light personality-wise and personal-wise, like, I don't want to go to Azusa Pacific. You were too That's hippie to go I was to way too hippie, yeah. And Westmont was like, this is, like, me, like, very cool place in a lot of ways, and just fitting my personality. And it just felt like home and uh, more intellectual in certain ways. So I knew Westmont was, like, the right college, but I still was not sure if I should even go to college, or I didn't, I didn't want to be regular. I didn't want to yeah, go to wanted Christian to be college. a rebel and do something I did. interesting. So I prayed a lot about it even through that summer, mm-hmm. and I looked at, like, YWAM, like, going mm-hmm. on missions or doing something like that. And I actually did have a moment where finally mm-hmm. I was like, God, I'm willing to do anything for you, you know? Like, if you want me to go and, like, 
be a garbage collector for the rest mm-hmm. of my life. Like, not that there's anything wrong with that, but like, if that's what you want, like, I'll do that. And I did hear God be like, you want to do like all these like crazy things for me? Would you be willing to do what you think of as the lame, normal thing for me? It's like, <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, I will. <laughs> nice. So, um, that's how it was resolved. Yeah. But it, that didn't happen until like, I think that was like two weeks before the fall deadline. semester started. Yeah. No, like I had already accepted, Deposit. but I was still considering like withdrawing if so. Just leave. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Yeah. yeah. No, I I think for me it was um, there was a point in time where I misheard God very like very wrongly about a relationship, and it did end up with me like not asking God a single question for like three months. Because afterwards. you were so mad. The, about no, I was afraid. Yeah, in the aftermath, I was so afraid of mishearing God again that I was like, obviously, I can't be trusted to hear God mm-hmm. because I'm not. I'm not going to end up like being like that again. Mm-hmm. Kind of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So why do you think God yeah. let you go through that? Or like that? so that's a great question. I think I was not. Ask. I, I think it goes back to like I wasn't asking God like in good faith. I wasn't asking. Like him you out. weren't really yeah. willing to hear a no. I was. Yeah, I was like I was not willing to hear a no. And I'm gonna guess, looking back at it, that I probably did hear a no, and then I just kept going. Mm. If that makes sense, where I was like, mm. oh well, that contradicts what I already heard. Mm. And you know what I mean? Mm. Um, yeah, that would be why. Hmm. I heard the story as um, a book that I read. There's a lady who moved to Uganda as, like, a young woman, and she ended up adopting all these kids and whatever. Anyway, at one point, she was caring for this sick woman who had several children, and she was very, very sick, and she felt very confident that God said that she will be healed. She will be healed. Mm -hmm. And she, like, believed it hardcore. was like, we're just waiting for God to do his thing. Like, he's going to heal you at some point. And then the lady died, and she was like devastated because she's like what is going on mm-hmm. like you told me she was going to be healed and um and it took her i think a while to come around like to like letting god mm-hmm. even comfort her through that because she was she was just like totally caught mm-hmm. off guard because she was so confident um but god told her something like this lady needed someone with hope to care for her and not like a almost like a hospice care Mm -hmm. from you would not have been what she needed. Mm -hmm. And so it was almost like, it's not about you Mm -hmm. or something was kind of her answer Mm -hmm. that she got. But I was like, even reading that, I was like, Ooh, like, I don't think I like that answer from God. Like I would be, I would be devastated and and angry. I think if I felt misled that way, it's like almost like manipulative or something. It seems like, but then I'll be honest. I, I, I have trouble with that. Yeah, and I like, did too. I, I feel like I, I, I don't know, man. Like that. So you think she she must have misheard or something? Yeah, or? I I think God is the God of truth, not mm-hmm. the God of lies. Yeah. And so, if the answer is God lied, my answer is like we talked about last episode. Yeah. The Bible says that's not true. <laughs> Yeah, and you know I, w- I, mean? I would say maybe, like, God did heal her. Like, she is yeah. healed yeah. in eternity, you know? Like, yeah. maybe he allowed her to, you know, misunderstand <laughs> yeah. or something, you yeah. know? Like, I agree, though. God doesn't lie. Yeah. Or mislead. I don't know. I feel like there's there's times where he misleads. I don't know. <laughs> Can you give me an example? I would say, like, for instance, this is what came to mind, is when Jesus told parables and he wouldn't speak directly to the crowds. And he's like, because yeah. they have to, like, and, like, not that he was directly misleading, but he also wasn't being as clear as he could have been. Yeah, but that, that's, like, that's, like, God not revealing to people who have hard hearts not God actively misleading someone mm. to manipulate them into doing something that they wouldn't do if he didn't yeah. lie to them. But okay. do you think God ever doesn't... <laughs> what a, what about you... the really weird story in the Old Testament okay. of the prophets where uh, the kings are deciding to go to war or not? Yeah. And they call all their prophets, yep. and all the prophets are like, yes, go to war, you'll succeed. And he's yeah. like, hey, is there a prophet of the Lord? He's like, yes, there's one, but he never says anything nice. And they call him... 
And he's like, yeah, go, you'll succeed. And they're like, tell us the truth. What did God actually say? <laughs> and then this prophet's like, uh, no, you're, you're going to die. You're going to get wiped out. Yeah. And then, um, and then he goes on. He's like, and he describes, like, here's what happened. The sons of God presented themselves before the Lord. And the Lord was like, how shall I get this destruction to happen? <laughs> and one of the spirits was like, I know, uh, I'll send a lying spirit to the prophets. And God's like, yes, do that. You'll succeed. <laughs> yeah, do you know what passage that is? Uh, off the top of my head, it's Second Kings something. Um, Second Kings 22. Guessing. No, we don't have to talk about it right now, but yeah. that is like a... Hey, I mean, it's just a weird passage, yeah. honestly. And I have some ideas about what's part of what's going on there, but... But I think regardless, in that story yeah. about the woman, it's like his heart was not against anybody. You know what I mean? Like, it was not... Like, his... Like, there wasn't any, like, mischaracterization of God in the sense that, like, he wasn't causing... Um, so you were saying God was telling a white lie. <laughs> <laughs> No, I don't think he lied. Okay. So I don't think he lied. I think he allowed someone to mishear him for an extended period of time yeah. when he could have intervened and said, you're wrong. Yeah. <laughs> you know, you're mishearing me. And I'm actually saying that she's going to die. You know, like he allowed, like for some time he allowed you to be very confident in your miss. Yeah. understanding and he allowed that like he could have yeah. slapped you across the face and said Jake I said no like yeah. he didn't do that to you though he allowed yeah. you to go through that season no, I agree and I think there's that level of God allows us when we've chosen the wrong thing he allows us to choose that yeah I just okay. yeah well, I had I had the I had the chapter right but the book wrong it's first Kings 22 I don't know how okay. I do that but I <laughs> Uh, so the messenger goes to Micaiah and says, Behold the words of the prophets, with what accord are favorable to the king? Let your word be like the word of them. But Micaiah's like, I have to speak whatever the Lord says. Sorry. Uh, so going down to... Yeah. Verse 19. And Micaiah said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. And all the host of heaven standing beside him on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who will entice Ahab that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said one thing and another said another. And then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord saying, I will entice him. And the Lord said to him, By what means? And he said, I will go out and will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, You are to entice him and you shall succeed. Go out and do so. Now therefore, behold... The Lord has put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these, your prophets. The Lord has declared disaster for you. Yeah, so I mean, looking at that, I would say this one prophet doesn't say mm-hmm. that. And I would throw away, this is Ahab, correct? Yeah. Uh, which means that all of his other prophets. Yeah, all are, of them are, are not are, prophets are of the Lord. Are not prophets of the Lord. So correct. it's like they're doing, so like God is like, I'm going to let them do, the, all the lying spirits that lie to them all the time mm-hmm. are going to continue to lie to them. Yeah. But, I mean, it would be a lot different if Micaiah lied. Yeah, like the very fact that Micaiah is there saying that this happened. It, it says that God is actually, in some ways, setting up, like, Ahab, see what's going on and don't do it. Like, in a weird way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, there's, I don't know. So that, that's, I, I would have, and we can maybe come back in another episode and, and readdress this, but I, I think I would have a very hard time trusting God. Mm-hmm. If I believed that God was okay with with letting people who are actively trying to pursue Him yeah. believe the wrong thing, and that's why I think like I was mm-hmm. not actively trying to pursue God mm-hmm. and ask mm-hmm. what His will was, and I was putting in the wrong thing mm-hmm. into what I thought God was saying. Yeah. But I think if I, I mean, it would be a lot different if I was in a spot of I think this, but I'm actively trying to get God to speak to me. And if he still let me and never responded and let me think that I would, that he was saying the wrong thing, that would be outside the God that I feel like I know. Hmm. Does that make sense? Mm-hmm. Anyways. Yeah, so we're, we're, um, we're at point D and E, which is basically, how do you combat your fears about mishearing God? And what's your best piece of advice? Um, I think 
praying for God's will is something that Jesus taught us to do. Mm-hmm. And I think that's like one of the hardest but best practices that we can do regularly because I think it separates our kind of tiny understanding of what we want and our situation from our perspective. And it basically says God has a will and it's bigger and better and different than mine. And I need to be open Mm -hmm. to the fact that God has a different plan maybe than what I have. (laughs) So Mm -hmm. I think that just like praying for God's will um, and trying to open your heart to really pray for his will to be done, Mm -hmm. um, both in the world at large, but also in your own life and in your own relationships. I think that can be um, a practice that will set our hearts on God's character Mm -hmm. of goodness and then just allow us to rest in his goodness despite whatever circumstances he might bring our way. Mm -hmm. Well, What would you say? I think um, that the like my like I said my my biggest fear is the idea that if I listen and I'm wrong, right, and that God doesn't actually care and He's not actually speaking to me mm-hmm. while I'm actively like trying to you know find out what I'm supposed to do and I've I've gotten the wrong thing. Um, I think the the point is it's kind of like a it's like an all the way or a none of the way kind of thing where it's like you know what, honestly, I'm at the spot where it's like, if I'm following God and I'm asking him and I feel like I hear his word and have it confirmed, if it's not, if it turns out to not to be true, I'm glad that I found out that my faith is wrong. <laughs> and that sounds really, like, really bad in some yeah. ways. Yeah, but, it, but it's better to be all in than to, like, play it safe because you're scared. Yeah, it's like, I would rather know, and I believe that God exists, and I yeah. believe I have faith in him, and I believe I have a relationship with him. But it's like, it's not worth it to me to play a part, mm-hmm. like, to play partially so that... I can make sure that I never have to feel sad about being wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I yeah, or to avoid doubt, the yeah. experience, the unpleasant experience of doubt. Yeah, it's like if you allow God to have opportunities to succeed or fail in His yeah. <laughs> relationship with you, then you're yeah allowing real doubt to be experienced, but then also the vindication of yeah. God. Yeah, so I'd say my advice in that is like just. Do it, go all in, and make sure that you're asking God and communicating with God openly and honestly the whole time, mm-hmm. and that you're not um, mm-hmm. trying to put your what you want in Yeah, do you think if you talk to yourself, like if you had the ability to talk to yourself when you were in that place of mishearing, would you have been able to identify that you were not being open and honest? Um, or do you think you would have said, yeah, I am being open and honest right now? And it's like retrospectively that you say... Yeah, I think it's one of those things where because I feel like I didn't know what it felt like to actually hear from God mm-hmm. that I couldn't, like that, that something that seemed like it felt like I should like go all in on it. Mm-hmm. So I don't know if I, I don't know what, what would have changed if, I think basically if I would have ever been able to like hear God very clearly before that point that I would have been like, no, this is dumb. But because I didn't have that experience, I don't know if there's anything that someone could have said. What do you think, Luke? Your biggest fear and your biggest piece of advice, either about your own fear or in general? Yeah, I I mean, I have fears about different things. I don't think I have a fear about okay. mishearing God. Um, my biggest piece of advice is to like, include other Christians in the conversation. I know that's come up in different themes and different ways. Uh, going back to like my stressed out college um, like one of the encouragements at that time was through my older sister like she wrote me a letter where um, it was almost like her prayers for me and also like take the pressure off like it's going to be okay Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I had like a lot of like you know the college you go to and then you choose your major and then that determines what you do for the rest of your life oh, so I'm making this decision right now and she was kind of like no you're just picking the college you're going to go to and those other choices come later <laughs> like yeah, and you um, kind of did that with dating too yeah I did um, 
It's a pattern. It's a pattern for me. <laughs> Stress or undo unnecessary. Anyway, but um, like bringing other Christians into the conversation, um, like this is hypothetical, but it's interesting actually, Jake, hearing you share about that versus now. I think you're you are more open now with like here's what how I feel like God's speaking to yeah. me. Like you include other people mm-hmm. in what you're hearing. And I think that gives opportunity for other people to be prayerfully attentive or if like, you know, like I was praying for you and I don't think that yeah. or uh, my concerns or questions yeah. where you're not just relying on the accuracy of your own listening. Yeah, or, true. I think that's a big, a big point is like sharing with us. And one of the things I was talking to Luke about as he's um, been writing a book that mm-hmm. has someone hear from God in it. And I was like, whenever I feel like I hear from God, if I tell people about it, if it's true, generally they're more sure of it than I am. Like they're more like, Oh, that's obvious. That's a sign from God. And I'm like, I don't know about that. And they're like, Jake, stop being an idiot. Like, <laughs> um, <laughs> and that's not always the case, but I think often it is, or like often it's, I have any, I have a shorter uh, half life on my memory for things that God has said. Um, than, um, than other than people, other people mm. right? Because like, like I'm experiencing it, and I'm like, mm. oh yeah, God said this thing six months ago. Is that still a thing? And people are like, yeah, duh. Mm. But like, because of the emotions involved for me, that mm-hmm. it doesn't feel as yeah. as recent or relevant. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm. Perfect. Well, anyways, Janelle, would you close us in prayer? Yeah. yeah, I was gonna ask what 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 is the application oh. this week? Oh goodness. That's a great question. Uh, Don't be afraid. <laughs> Listen to God. Here Jesus is. Yeah, I think that the application is um, to take a, a step towards um, asking God the questions um, that you may be afraid to ask him. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be, to kind of have open hands with those questions. Mm-hmm. And to even ask yourself when you look at the things that you want or that you're asking God about or you're looking for direction about is to ask yourself the question, what would I do if God said no? And if you are like, well, if God said no, then I'd be really mad at God. Then change your heart and then ask the question. (laughs) Yeah, that would be the application for the week. All right, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are a God who speaks um, and that uh, you have a good and pure intention and a good and pure heart toward us and toward um, all the people we know and love and even toward our enemies, Lord. So I just pray um, that you would give us a heart of communication with you, a heart that um, is ready to submit to your voice because you have that authority over our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.